come to bike to school and have fun and be safe. School is something that can be so beneficial that it can shape your life or it can be something that absolutely wrecks you well into your adult years and so you have nightmares about it even after you've graduated for over a decade. <laughs> not that I'm projecting my own issues here. No, definitely not. Depending on the school you were at, you often had different rules than other children in their classrooms. And that's not uncommon, depending on if you were in a public school, a private school, or even a boarding school and so on. But sometimes the rules that these schools can have can really push the general wisdom of what it means to be a good rule. So with that in mind, here now are the 20 weirdest school rules from around the world. Number 20. Red ink pens. Now, I'm not lying by saying that I'm going to showcase the most unusual school rules in the world, so be ready for the madness to come. For those of you that have been out of school for a while, I want you to try and remember one key thing from your experiences. Imagine that you've just done a big homework assignment, you've done all of your studying, you've turned into your teachers, and you wait for the next day to come to see what kind of grade or critique that you've received. What ink did your teachers use to showcase what errors you made on your homework? It was red, right? Because after all, red is a very vivid color, and it contrasts perfectly with the gray of pencils or the black of pens. And as a result, red ink pens were the standard for teachers when it came to marking things off so that you knew exactly what you did wrong. And so you could go and correct it. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Well, back in 2014, one academy in the UK county of Cornwall Teachers were instructed not to grade papers in red pen because it was, quote, a very negative color. Now, I'm being serious, this actually happened. And what's more, to further help the students, the teachers were told to write positive comments about the work, and then the students would reply to the teachers in a different color ink. Now look, I get the intent here, but there's a difference between trying to build up the students and shielding them from thinking things that they need to be thinking at some point. Now look, nobody likes to screw up, but when you do, you need to see what mistakes that you made in order to learn and grow from them and have a lesson or two. And just as important, why is red a very negative color in the first place? Because the last time I checked, it's the color of your heart, your blood, and many of the nation's flags and so on. So it's fine to be nice to kids, but it's also important to tell them the truth when they make a mistake. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Take a look at this picture. Yes, the faces in the picture are blurred out, don't focus on that, but instead focus on the fact that these are kids who apparently take a nap during class. This is a real thing that's being done in China right now, and apparently there are articles out there that actually support the truth in this matter. Now, the goal of these mandatory naps is to help the children stay rested and thus be better attuned in school. Just to be clear, I'm not talking about toddlers or kindergarten students. I'm talking about seven-year-olds and above engaging in this practice. In one classroom, they even have desks and chairs that can be turned into makeshift recliners so that the students and the teacher can all take a nap for about 30 minutes and be well rested before going on with the rest of their classes. The country has even had certain policies implemented to where students are asked to sleep at certain times every night, even if they don't have their homework done. I'm sure that some of you may scoff at that, but if it does work, who are we to really judge? Plus, children may be balls of energy some of the time, but that doesn't mean they don't need a nap. I mean, heck, I wish this was something they'd done in my grade especially in high school. Then uh, perhaps I wouldn't have gotten in trouble for napping in class. <laughs> As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag fancy topic and let me know your opinion in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19, the bike bus. 
I'm just so excited to be here. I already have students here. This is just going to be an amazing day. This next one isn't so much a rule as it is a guideline or a good suggestion that a certain person in Portland, Oregon organizes to this day and apparently has great success with. Specifically, the thing is called the bike bus, and it comes from a physical education teacher named Sam Balto. What he does is that every day at 8, 10 a.m., he puts on a yellow safety vest, starts playing some music on a portable speaker, and then goes down a certain route on the way to school. As he goes along, the various students of that school will follow along, and they all ride together in a massive bike-filled caravan that has to be seen to be believed. And to reiterate, this is not a mandatory thing. It's something that Balto does, and the students will willingly do it with him. Apparently, he has around 170 students doing this with him every morning as they bike to school. There are numerous ironies to this idea, not the least of which is that not only do the children like it, but the community loves it as well. The bike bus gets the children to hang out together on the way to school, puts them in a good mood as they go there, and we all know that doesn't happen the regular way. Plus, it's good for the environment. After all, because they're riding bikes, they're not being driven in cars that put emissions into the air. Not to mention, this is a boon to the children who would sometimes have to travel to school on their own because they didn't have a parent or a sibling to ride with. Come to bike to school and have fun and be safe. And as Balto happily notes, doing a nice bike run gets the children to exercise before they're sitting in classes for most of the day. And so, the bike bus idea helps them in numerous ways, and that's something that everybody should appreciate. I know this wouldn't work in every school district, but the fact that it works here is pretty epic. Number 18. Ponytails. This one is so stupid that I can't actually believe that it's real, and yet it is. What's more, it comes from Japan, a country that's infamous for various things, including, apparently, their strict rules when it comes to school. The rule in question pertains only to females, and they're told that they can't wear a ponytail because that's going to expose the back of their neck. Why would that be banned? Well, they're worried, and I'm not kidding here, that the exposure of the neck will excite the boys in a certain way, if you get my drift. Yes, as in that kind of excitement, the one down below. Do I really need to explain how ridiculous it is? And to be fair, not all schools in Japan will do this, but the fact that apparently a tenth do is far too much, and that's just one of the rules that are imposed on female students out of fear of what boys might think or feel. It's already rough being a female at school, you don't have to be a girl to know that, but this is just adding insult to injury. Plus, being blunt here, it's Japan, a nation that basically revels in exposing the skin of females in their manga, anime, and other practices in the country. I mean, you can buy used underwear in a vending machine. Now, they don't ban those, do they? Instead, they ban certain things that ladies can do with their hair or their outfits, not out of fear of what they might do, but because of what the boys might do. It's a nice precedent you're setting there, Japan. Number 17. Flamin' Hot Cheetos. So these hot Cheetos, these hot snacks, actually can damage your stomach because they increase the acidity. Did you all see that movie that came out not too long ago about the birth of Flamin' Hot Cheetos? How it wasn't about some big corporate idea that took off, but something that was thought up by the little guy and became one of the biggest success stories in the food industry? Well, you might have felt pretty positive after that film because you know that many people enjoyed that guy's idea and product. However, in some places, it is just straight up banned. Several public schools in California, New Mexico, and Illinois, for example, have banned Flamin' Hot Cheetos because they claim that they were unhealthy, germy, messy, addictive, and salty. <laughs> there are so many jokes that I want to make, but I'll resist because I want to bash how stupid the schools are. First off, yes, technically Cheetos of any kind are unhealthy because it's a snack food. But here's the thing. Even back then, schools were letting students bring all kinds of food in, and I'm talking from experience here. Not to mention, certain school-approved lunches included things like pizza. And don't forget, pizza can be very unhealthy as well. As for the whole germy reasoning, do I really have to explain germ mechanics and human anatomy? I mean, people by definition are germy and big germ carriers. I mean, that's why you're told to wash your hands with soap so that you can get rid of all the germs you've picked up in your everyday life from everything you do. I mean, I know the guy who wrote this script, and he's absolutely disgusting. 
I can only imagine what his keyboard looks like as he was typing all of these words for me to read. So, if you're really all that worried about Cheetos making your children dirty or germ-wise, you may as well have a clean room for them after every major activity. Plus, these are children after all. You don't think they'll find ways to sneak Cheetos into school? Good luck with stopping them from having their flaming hot foods that they love. Number 16. Chat GPT and AI. This is one that is a legitimate fear that many people are dealing with on a whole lot of levels of life, and not only in the schools. Even before computers were full of high-tech solutions like Google and such, there were things like Spark Notes and Cliff Notes, where you could go so that you could get the highlights of a certain book and the potential assignments and just do just enough to get by without having to waste your time actually reading. Now granted, this wouldn't work for every topic, but things like literature, history, and other classes could get seriously cheated on through certain programs. Fast forward to now, and ChatGPT, among other AI programs, are so advanced that all a student has to do is type in something like, write a report about the Civil War, and the program will be able to do that with fair enough degree of accuracy. AI program ChatGPT will spit out a complex answer in seconds. It can write within minutes what would take a regular person hours to complete, depending on how deep they had to study. Not surprisingly, parents and educators have banned such things because they feel it takes away from the educational process. And to be fair, it kind of technically does. You need to learn how to write for yourself because not doing so will actually kind of hinder you in the future. And if you don't believe in the problems that things like ChatGPT can cause, one of the major issues in the Writers Guild strike in Hollywood was studios wanting writers to take a back seat to AI, even though the computer scripts were terrible. Now thankfully they were able to nix that in their new contracts, and life moves on. Number 15. The Shorts Revolt Depending on the school that you went to, you might have had a strict uniform code that you had to adhere to. And at times it's okay or even understandable for certain kinds of schools to have a strict clothing regimen because of the lessons they're trying to teach. However, when students are getting hurt because of those strict policies, well, they may end up revolting. Over in the UK, one school said that boys had to wear black shorts every day, no matter what, even when the temperature was over 30 degrees Celsius. I'll give you a hint, that's really hot. So what did the boys do? Well, they decided to wear skirts. That's right, they used the dress code against the school and wore skirts so that they wouldn't be drenched in sweat in their nether regions every single day. The protest ended up working, and the school relaxed its rule on shorts. Okay, guys, what do you make of that? Are we in support? Yeah. You see, sometimes protests do actually work. Number 14. Don't say please. I seriously fear for the future generations if stupid ideas like this are allowed to fester. In one school in Charlotte, North Carolina, they decided to do a no-nonsense nurturing style that made it so that teachers could be as strict as possible to ensure that students got the teachings they needed. I'm not really sure what to think about that outside of that I do feel bad for the kids under that policy. But what really sets me off is that the teachers and students for that matter were banned from saying the word please during conversations or other verbal exchanges. Why? I'm not kidding with this when I say that in their minds, saying please was a way of offering the option to be disobedient. So if you said, could you please hand me that, you would technically say no and thus be disobedient. Again, I fear for the future of my world if I have to talk about one of the most important words in the human language, not to mention banning language of this nature should technically be a violation of the law. It's not a curse word. It's a very common word that can be very nicely and respectfully used. But then again, these are dumb things that schools will sometimes ban. Number 13. Smartphone Usage On the flip side, though, this is one rule that I'm sure many teachers and parents will get behind. In California, a law was passed for certain types of schools that actually makes it illegal for them to use their smartphones outside of emergencies. For example, needing to call 911 to get help or calling someone for immediate assistance on a matter of personal nature. Some people may think that this is taking things too far given that 
think lunchtime should be at least allowed to have your phone. Smartphones can be used as an educational tool and thus be something that could help the school overall. But as we all know, children, especially teenagers, are not always the brightest and wisest when it comes to having certain things that they feel they can use at their leisure. After all, children just love to text or look up things during class that they really shouldn't be, but they do so because they don't feel that they can get in trouble. I'm not saying that every school should ban cell phone usage on a grand scale, but it wouldn't be the most unfair thing ever to do if it meant that students actually paid attention in class. Number 12. Backpacks and lockers. Now this one is just a little tricky to talk about because we're about to talk about some school shootings, something that the United States has a very bad and serious problem with, especially over the last several years. There have been a whole lot of options presented to schools to try and stop these attacks, but not all of them have been fair or even smart for a whole lot of reasons. Earlier in 2023, Michigan decided to remove a certain vehicle for the guns to get into the school by demanding that backpacks and lockers be banned. Now, this isn't a random thing they asked for. In May, a third grader brought a gun into a Grand Rapids school inside of their backpack, and that was the fourth gun that was found in the city schools in about a year. He asked me why his school is searching him and treating him like a criminal. Which is really horrifying to think about especially when you consider the fact that the kid was like eight years old. But now, picture it from their perspective, they can't enforce laws to get rid of the guns, and the U.S. Congress has made such notions impossible to pass. So what else are they to do? Well, they had to take the only action that was available to them, to get rid of a way that guns were being brought into the schools and hidden. To be clear, they didn't say that they would ban them forever, but given all that's happened in the United States over the last several years, you can't really blame them for trying to stem the tide for a long time to try and prevent future incidents. Number 11. Bottled Water Before you freak out and think that people have gotten too much power, this one is actually a good thing. Because in 2010, in Australia, a Sydney school decided to straight up ban plastic water bottles at the school. And the middle school SRC identified this problem and instead installed water stations where free refills could be had because they wanted to cut down on plastic waste that was building up because of all of the plastic water bottles. And that's really the gist of it. We know that plastic waste is one of the biggest problems in the world today. Due to how it's composed, it is not the easiest thing to recycle, despite what people may tell you. And yet it is mass produced in shocking quantities. And so it's literally overrunning our planet with waste. There is an island in the ocean that is made solely out of plastic products, for example. So if one school is trying to stem that tide by getting rid of as many bottles as possible, well, we should all be there to cheer them on. Number 10. Long Lasting Hugs Now, you can say that schools have gotten too much power and they're trying to take away hugs. This is a very real thing that happened in 2022. One school in the UK tried to ban hugs because, and I'm not kidding here, they felt that they were detrimental to a positive school environment. What in the actual hell? Thankfully, a bunch of people protested the rule for various reasons, and it's not hard to see why. Yes, it can be possible for a hug to go too far, but it's also one of the best ways to show care and affection to a friend, a family member, or someone that you genuinely love. If someone is hurting emotionally, what do you do? Well, you hug them to show them it's going to be okay. It's a beautiful thing, and they tried to take it away, the bastards. What the heck, UK? Number 9. The Edgar Haircut Hair is another tricky thing to talk about because there are those times when hair should absolutely be reined in for the benefit of school time, and yet it's also an expression of a child or a teenager and should be treasured more times than not. In this case, I'm talking about the Edgar haircut, which is a specific trend that many young Hispanic boys had for one reason or another. My hair, I used to have long hair. Like, okay. I didn't have that cut. And yet in Texas, they tried to ban it because they claimed that it was distracting in school and thus should be banned. There was even a petition for people to sign and try and get the rule passed. Looking at this haircut, if you're distracted by it, it sounds like you are the problem, not the boys. 
Besides, we've seen many more distracting hairstyles than this. I mean, trust me. Number 8. Slang Here's another tricky one, because certain kinds of language should be restricted in school for obvious reasons. Things like cuss words and slurs and racist things, but slang is tricky to moderate because it's always evolving and sometimes it's stuff that children and teens pick up because of who they're around. In one such school in London, they tried to ban a whole bunch of words, and this was after they got registered as an academy. They had a policy, quote, to develop the soft skills they will need to compete for jobs in university places, and the skills they need to express themselves confidently and appropriately for a variety of audiences. Now, I kind of get what they're going for, but Really, this is just another case of, do you really think you can moderate that all the time? Also, they tried to ban words such as like and ain't. Those are in the dictionary, you know. Number 7. The Gender Curtain It's a well-known thing that in the Middle East, many countries do not offer the best educational opportunities for women. When the Taliban took back Afghanistan, one of the first things they did was to impose rules where boys and girls could not sit together in the same classroom. One of the ways they went about enforcing that was by putting a curtain between them, and this was one of the many things that were meant to make women feel inferior to men, and trust me when I say that many other things they've done are much worse. Now, I'd love to tell you the ways that this should be changed, but given who the Taliban are and the beliefs that they strongly hold on to, it's not my words that matter. Thankfully, protests are ongoing to try and change things, but as with all matters like this, change is happening very slowly. Number 6. Best Friends Can you believe there are actually some schools that try and prevent people from having one singular best friend? According to someone, a child with a single best friend will become territorial and possessive. See, so many studies out there show it's not your quantity of friends. Of that friend and thus reject other people hanging out with them. Yeah, we've seen it in the past, but I've also seen people in larger friends groups becoming pressured to do things they don't want to do. That's why it's called peer pressure. And furthermore, how would you even regulate that? Not to mention there are times when we have that one person that we connect with on a level that we don't feel comfortable with in a larger group. Why would you want to take away the person that child feels the most comfortable with? Number 5. Don't raise your hand. According to some schools, it is bad for students to raise their hand to answer questions because it means that the same hands keep going up and that other students weren't being challenged. I do get the idea, but the execution is lacking. If anything, you can just ignore those same hands and call on students that didn't answer. It's not really a hard concept. You just make things work with what you've got. Number 4. Recess Restrictions When we were in school, recess was the best time, and when I found out I didn't have it anymore, it was soul-crushing. So now imagine having a recess where you could only do very specific things and only if you had supervision. That's what some schools have done in Long Island. At first, it was because of construction that was taking place, and they were trying to keep the children contained so they didn't get hurt. But other schools felt that using things like hard balls and cartwheels would put children in danger and be disruptive. So they took them away. Wow! Number 3. Day Duties here is a rule from Japan that is about completing tasks. For example, cleaning duties where students clean the classrooms and other areas, school lunch duties where they serve prepared food on plates and bowls, and day duties where all the students in the class carry out tasks every day in turns. The goal of this is to learn life skills and other meaningful things, but in my eyes it's just forced labor, and thus removes work from the adults who would usually get paid to do these things. I mean, I'm just saying. Number 2. Acronyms Now, this isn't a teacher thing, thankfully, but rather it was some parents and officials at a school who were upset because their children uh, were putting acronyms like LOL in each other's yearbooks and it somehow ticked them off. Now first off, how bored do you have to be that this is what you're getting upset about? And seriously, if the worst thing that your child is doing is writing certain slang in each other's yearbooks, what have you really got to complain about? It means that your child is doing nothing else wrong, but you know, you should be grateful. You should be down on your knees, thanking whatever pantheon you worship 
that the only thing you have to endure is your child saying LOL about everything, and as long as it's not a racial slang, you're probably in the clear with that. So stop being so uptight, because it's really super annoying. Number 1. Bake Sales Now I'm not only calling out parents and school officials, I'm doing it to the government. Because in the United States, there's a thing called the Federal Smart Snack Standards, and certain schools have adopted the practice to try and help their students be more healthy. Once again, in theory, it's a nice idea and something that could be done properly to help the students, but in this case, it also meant that they basically banned bake sales from taking place. Because you sell sweets at those bake sales, and so you're contributing to the unhealthy nature of certain students. Except that bake sales are used to raise money for schools and projects and stuff, so by trying to make them healthier, you're actually taking away money that could be used for education. Good one, schools. That's all from the realm of schools and rules that have helped to define them in weird ways for various students. Were you shocked or weirded out by the rules that were applied in these places? And which ones did you think were the most weird of them all? Perhaps you know of another rule that could have made it to the list. Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. You should check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen. And I will see you next time.